Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? It's Bata Run, and this is episode 10 of the It's Real podcast. Yes, I'm recording episode 9 on the same day as episode 10, but it's just one of those days where I have energy to make these videos. So here you go. Enjoy. And I hope I keep you entertained with a bit of ASMR. Not enough sound, right? We need nuts. Let's crisp it up a bit. Hazelnut. Cashew nut. Almond. Walnut. And finally, water. <sighs> okay, that's the ASMR part done. Now, let's carry on from where we left off in episode 9. So I was talking about Pompeii, right? I was talking about travelling. So yeah, the ancient ruins. Okay, that's Rome done. The next country we visited was Athens. Now, Athens, again, the place we stayed at was a bit dodgy. Hotel was a definitely improvement. The rooms was an improvement, okay? Because we weren't, pardon me, we weren't in huts anymore. We were in better rooms. But the area we were, where those rooms were in seemed a little bit dodgy, I can't lie. Because we saw some, you know, ladyboys and that. I'm not going to get into too much details, but yeah, they were outside doing their business and whatever. But yeah. But obviously, once we got out of that area, the ruins and everything was beautiful. We went to Ac Acropolis. Again, these are just like ancient ruins of buildings. You'll see a lot of those in Athens and Rome's and stuff. But it was nice. It was nice uh, views as well. We did other things too. You know, we explored the nightlife, looked around, explored. Uh, Athens is a beautiful country. Very nice. Um... After Athens, we went to, I think we went to Mallorca, yeah, unless I'm missing a country, I think it was Mallorca, and I planned that trip, me and another guy, we both planned that trip, and bro, that trip was beautiful too, especially the boat ride at the end, we had a boat party at the end, and uh it was vibes, bro. It was like the perfect definition of a holiday. That whole boat rides like summarized the whole trip beautifully. I should be talking about this at the end of the trip because we I haven't spoke about what I did at the beginning of the trip. But I'm just saying the boat ride was definitely one of the highlights of that trip. Trust me, the boat party. Um... But Mallorca, we went... Where did we go? Yeah, we explored the nightlife. Looked at the clubs and stuff. It was nice. Uh, oh, we did something in Mallorca. Was that Mallorca or was that Boss? Oh, buggying. Buggying was another highlight. So buggying is basically... It's like one of them cars you drive. It has no windows no doors actually no doors actually yeah so you can literally fall off i was driving it so you can fit four people in one buggy right so yeah m me and my mates were in one buggy i was the driver and we had to go through these really narrow dirt roads and at first it was it was all right i was like okay this is fine i can drive this but the moment we went into the freaking stony roads bloody hell the amount of bumpy 
freaking sharp stones there were was crazy. It was a bumpy ride. Very narrow roads, a lot of sharp turns had to be made. But as usual, your boy Batterin was on point with the driving. My driving skills are top notch, bro. I've been in an accident once, but I can't lie, ever since that accident, actually, even before that accident, I was a pro driver, trust me. And I'll never fail to be a pro, pardon me, a pro driver. Yeah. So, yeah, buggy, crazy. Oh, yeah. Another little funny story that happened, the buggy, okay? So we had to go down these dirt roads and then there was a point where we all stopped, parked and got some food and drinks. Just had a little five or 10 minute break. I think it was like a 10, 15 minute break where we can just stop, get some food, drinks, take a few photos near the views because they, re they had really nice views there and then get back on the buggy and go back to where we started. So when we, when we got back onto the buggies, one of my mates was like, let me drive this time. So he wanted to drive, right? So I let him drive. <laughs> he couldn't control the buggy. <laughs> so uh, as soon as he started, because the way you control it is a bit different, right? It's not like driving a normal car. The gears and everything is different. Most of it is the same, but it's a bit different. So he, as soon as he got on and he started it, right? It just went rolling forward. It was about to hit the buggy in front. And I was like, stop, stop. I was on the passenger seat in the front, in the front, right? So I had to put my foot down to, to actually press on the brake to stop it. And then that's when we both looked at each other and realized, yeah, I, I think I should drive. <laughs> so yeah, we stopped and then, and then it was fine after that. And another thing, when we got back to the place, the the guy who organized the whole buggy thing, right? He was using this um, this gun, right? To it's basically like an air gun, like high powered air, and he uses it to take all the dust off of our clothes because there's a lot of sand in the in those dirt roads, right? So he used it to like spray all over us. It's just basically sp he's spraying air on us just to get rid of all the, everything, right? So we had to go there one by one. And the way he was squeezing the freaking air into our clothes was a bit sus, I can't lie. <laughs> Man was fucking trying to give me the... What, what do you call this in Naruto? There's that move called in Naruto, 100 years of pain or whatever. I don't know, he was going up places. That's what I'm saying. He was going up places. What the hell happened here? Hold on. Technical issues. Give me two seconds. Okay, yeah, he was going up places without consent. That's a bit sus. Yeah. So yeah, great times in Mallorca. And obviously I told you about the boat ride. The boat ride was beautiful. Okay, the next trip after M Mallorca was Barca. Yep, Spain again, I know. But I feel like my mates couldn't get enough of it, so they planned a trip to Barca, and I feel like this was our favourite trip. Out of every trip we've been on, I think Barca was the best. Yeah, it has to be the best. Probably my favourite trip out of, out of them all. The, all the trips that I went on with my mates, Barca was probably the best. Okay, so Barca, we went jets. Okay, jet skiing. i got to talk about jet skiing, all right. However, my experience in jet ski could have gone a little bit better because the jet ski I had had problems. It had stability problems. So when I turned, it would shake a lot. Like basically, I had to have more control over the jet ski because it was shaking a lot. But I, I got... So because of that, I couldn't go as fast as everyone else. But even then... I still went fast, even though I was shaking. I was just using all my strength to get it on the, on the freaking, what do you call it? The surface of the water without me falling off. And I was still catching up with everyone. I was, I was at the back. I was the last person there, but that's because I had the worst freaking jet ski, but still amazing. Amazing. I would do that again for real. Yeah, 
and there was times where I was I was going on on top of the waves and I was like bang bro it's bumpy bro probably as bumpy more bumpier than the freaking buggy I can't lie yeah mental but 100% I'll go again 100% I'm not even lying so yeah Barca what else did we do it's more of a chilled holiday I can't lie we didn't stay at hotels we stayed we stayed in this um, I don't know what you call it but it's a it's more like a place where you cook for yourself you, you know you have your own kitchen you have um, your own like you know oven and fridge and everything to do all your own cooking and stuff so we basically made our own breakfast and made our own lunch we, we obviously we would go out to eat authentic Spanish food as, as well but whenever we woke up late and just couldn't be bothered and we just wanted to chill for a bit we just make our own food like we had we bought pizza we bought a lot of stuff and uh, had some really deep combos so the, the thing with Barca I feel like it was more of a trip where I actually spent good quality time with my mates it was less act uh, although I did do jet skiing I feel like it was less activities than other trips we've been on but even then it was still we still had good times like we still explored we went to the beach of course yeah went swimming in the beach Every time I go to the beach, by the way, I'm, I'm always in the sea. Um, you never see me just sunbathing for the whole day on a beach day. I'm always in the sea, in the water. Then I come out to sunbathe when I need to dry myself. That's how I I do beach trips every time. Even if it's in UK, bro. That's that's just me, and it? I feel like that's just the best way to do it. Because when the weather's so nice, so hot, and you're in the water and you're just floating and relaxing. The freshness of the water, the waves, the salt in your mouth and the sun on your face. That's the best way to experience a beach trip. Because you're doing all of the things at once, all the things you want to do. You can literally sunbathe in the water if you want to. You just have to just float like a starfish. That's it. And when you come back, when you're wet, and you come back and you lie on the the chair, the sun chair or whatever you call it, and you feel the heat. I mean, the water evaporating from your skin while while you're warming up from the heat. That's fe that feeling is really nice, cause it's like it kind of cools you down in that hot weather as well. So, yeah. That's how I do beach trips. We did beach a beach trip in um, Athens as well. Like we even had a, a little ball that we were playing with, a beach ball. And we were playing with that in the water. So yeah, Barca was amazing. And then of course, my most recent trip was Dubai. And uh, I went skydiving. That's all I need to say. Okay, that's the summary of um, Dubai. Skydiving. Skydiving, Burj Khalifa. That's it, man. Okay, let's move on to the topic. I've been talking about countries too many times. I mean, for too long. So, let's move on to what I've been watching on Netflix. So recently, I was to I told you there was this show I was watching, right, called The Eight Show. Eight Show is insane. It's crazy. At first, I was like really interested in the in the series, right? When I got to the last two, three, two or three episodes, oh, my face went like this, like like interested, like this, like interested to know what's going to happen next to this horrified I was bro <laughs> that series I don't know what to say I was speechless by the end of it I was speechless <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything but I was speechless 
I had mixed feelings about it. Like the first couple of episodes were really good, but then the last bit was, I don't know. I feel like one there was one episode where it did drag a little bit, but overall it was a good show. I thought I, I'd recommend it. It's has very small similarities to uh, Squid Game, and that's what I liked about it. Um, I'm watching this anime called One Punch Man. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. I finished season one so far. So with season one, let me give you a little review of One Punch Man season one, okay? So I thought I thought it was good. I thought it was it was cool, really cool. Uh it's definitely different from other animes. The thing I really like about One Punch Man is the fact that the main character, what's his name? Sait Saitama. Saitama I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right The main character He just skips all the The boring parts That you, normal animes Normally go through Like you know The backstories And the flashbacks And all that Like whenever He's facing a villain And they try to explain Their own storyline He Kind of Gets bored And he tries to skip that part And gets to The main point And that's what I like about it It's a bit more fast paced In that way and it's easier to watch compared to other animes. Also, I like the fact that he is the most powerful anime character of all time. Like, he's more powerful than Goku. And Goku was was the most powerful anime character ever. Until Saitama came, until One Punch Man came. And it's just a really nice new concept to see because I feel like I've never seen this in other animes before. Unless there are there has been animes like this. I've never seen one. Like it's basically a spoiler alert by the way. About a guy who is the most powerful superhero but he's just very lazy. I mean, he's not bothered. He because he loses emotion because every guy he defeats doesn't give him much of a challenge. So it's boring to him. Every fight is boring for him. And he has this this apprentice, his friend called Genus, who is like the opposite of Saitama because he actually tries really hard to be as strong as Saitama. And he looks up to Saitama as if he's his idol. Whereas Saitama is just like... He's had enough. He's the most powerful s superhero in anime. Yeah. He doesn't get the credit for it. That's another thing. People don't give him credit for the people he saves. And that's what another thing I liked about the anime. The fact that he has to go through those obstacles in order to prove, prove them wrong. That he is someone who saves people he's not a bad person he's he's a good guy trying to save people because at first they thought he's just screwing everything up because there was one episode where there was a meteor about to strike uh, a whole two cities and he hit it and broke it before it landed but even when he broke it it shattered into pieces and those pieces destroyed the, the parts of the city anyway and instead of the people in those cities cheering for him they were still complaining that he that he was responsible for it because there's these two guys kind of brainwashed them i mean he they manipulated the public and made the public go against him and he had to prove them wrong you know what i mean so i i like those challenges that he had to face throughout the anime that saitama did that's why i liked one punch man season one I'm going to watch season two, but from one friend I heard it's good. From another two friends I heard it's shit compared to season one. I want to watch it and see how it is for myself. Yeah, but season one was good. I enjoyed it. Anyways, that's it for the real 
It's Real Podcast Episode 10. And please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.